Hotplate Battle Royale. You might have heard of it, but where do we begin? Hotplate Battle Royale released October 14th, 2023 to astounding success, clocking in at over 1,000 concurrent players less than a week after launch. However, in the past couple of weeks, players and creators alike have found themselves voicing annoyances and quitting the server entirely. Why is that? In this video, I'll be going over the main issues and concerns about the Hoplite network up until this point in its life, what could be done about said concerns, and where the server is projected to be going over the next couple of months. Disagree with anything that I say in this video? Awesome! Leave a comment with a timestamp to the point of the video that you want to comment on down below so that we can have a healthy and constructive discussion. And without any further ado, what exactly is the current issue with Hoplite? To say that Hoplite has its fair share of issues is an understatement. Between balancing issues and toxicity, there's a lot to pick apart. However, despite how many issues the server may currently have, it's still a wildly successful server in its infancy with plenty of room to grow. To start us off, let's look at a timeless issue that spans not just across Hoplite, but all of Minecraft. We need to start out with the cheating issue. The abundance of both blatant and closet cheaters is a colossal issue in Hoplite right now. In such a competitive landscape, having an advantage through the use of third-party modifications throws the need for any skill out the window. This kind of brings us to our next point too. VPNs and alting. Even in instances that a player is discovered to be cheating and gets banned, there's really nothing in place to prevent them from loading up a VPN or a virtual private network to mask their identity and continue cheating. The issue does not lie in the fact that cheaters are gaining better stats over legit players, it's that cheaters are taking away the player's enjoyment on a server that leads to less legit players, which then leads to overall more cheating. By allowing cheaters to get away with alting, it's creating an unfun environment that nobody but cheaters wants to play in. The next point that we're going to be looking at is a bit more unique to Hoplite itself, which is the stagnant and repetitive gameplay. The metagame on Hoplite is fairly predictable at this point. Whichever weapon or item can be consistently obtained to help high-skilled players chase down less-skilled players is usually the meta. Let's look back at early iterations of the Dragon Katana, Potions, and the Reaper Scythe. In each of these instances, the meta revolved around being able to outspeed your opponent, preventing them from escaping. Usually, these items are very overpowered until the only thing that makes them good is nerf, rendering them completely useless or not worth going for. Having the exact same legendaries available, every game leads to a meta where going for the exact same item over and over is the only way to consistently win, leading to very stagnant and repetitive gameplay. Our next two points go pretty hand in hand, which is too much sweating and extreme toxicity. When it comes to sweating, there's absolutely nothing wrong with wanting to win a game. However, there are countless examples of players putting winning above everything else, including following the server's rules, which segues us into our very next point of extreme toxicity. Getting right into this point, I just want to say that nobody expects everyone to be an outstanding member of the community at all times. We all get tilted and fed up over games, and that's completely normal. But there are so many examples of toxicity and bullying in this community in places as broad as the voice chat or public community discord that gets completely overlooked and ignored by staff. When you're looking for new games and servers to play, you usually look for communities that welcome you, especially as a new player. Unfortunately for Hoplite, the community or communities that have decided to flock to the new Battle Royale game mode are notorious for being extremely toxic, uncontrollable, and very disrespectful. Be it for the sole reason that it's mostly children, the unmoderated toxicity of Hoplite shines regardless, making it a server that most of the community is going to keep at a distance. The final issue that we're going to be looking at is unbalanced items and peculiar updates. This point kind of relates back to what we said earlier about the meta revolving around good chase items, but also to the issue of overall balancing problems. Some items become way too strong or way too weak for absolutely no reason. When in its prime, the trident would do three hearts of damage to a full diamond with absolutely zero cooldown. At times, the balancing feels completely untested or completely random, leading to everyone wondering how the hell anyone thought it would be a good idea to add these changes to the live servers. Although, these are not the only issues found on Hoplite, what I just listed out are the main issues that I want to point out in this video going forward. We're going to be diving deeper into some of these issues later on in the video, as well as bringing up more, less impactful problems. But for now, with the main criticisms out of the way, I feel like it wouldn't be fair if we didn't go over potential fixes for these issues. When it comes to cheating on Hoplite, I'll be going over issues with the anti-cheat shortly in this video, but as for VPNs and alting, just don't allow it. There is absolutely no reason as to why VPN should be allowed on the server. Anyone can boot up any VPN and continue cheating over and over. By blocking VPNs, the only people who are going to be affected by this change are those who should not even be playing on the server in the first place. There is no reason to keep these players on the server even for player count reasons. Although, I do think that it would be very funny to see the number of online players drop drastically upon disabling, it would only go to show just how many current active players are cheaters and get away with it. 
As for the stagnant and repetitive gameplay, creating a rotating meta of disabling certain types of legendary weapons throughout the seasons would be amazing. This season, let's allow the Dragon Katana to be crafted, and the next, disable it. Maybe in one season, focus on enabling only ranged weapons to please the Reddit players, and the next, only have melee weapon crafts. Just something to change up the way that we play, as well as the meta to win. The best part is, if something doesn't work out, you could always change it up next season. But having the exact same crafts always available results in repetitive gameplay. Let's look at a game that does this perfectly. Fortnite. By vaulting weapons for certain seasons, it gives players time to really miss using the weapon, as well as building up hype for its re-release. In its downtime, you can always run tests to adjust each weapon to fit new metas. This results in having a never-ending cycle to the way that Battle Royale is played. As of current, the only events that have been on Hotplay have been based around holidays. The fact of the matter is, not everybody celebrates every holiday, so planning events with thematic elements outside of real-world events would be awesome. For example, imagine if Hotplay were to do an elemental mid-season event, where everyone on the server chooses a faction of either water, earth, fire, or air. Cosmetics could all be centered around one idea, but change depending on which element you chose. Think of it kind of like how the Pokemon cast form works. You could even take it a step further and have a battle between the elements. Whichever faction gets the most kills, wins, or gains games played could get a bonus prize at the end of the event. This not only incentivizes players to log in and play the server, but also adds a unique element to the server that builds community. The point that I'm trying to make here is that events could be way more interactive, or at least a little bit more than they currently have been. Tackling the issue of toxicity and sweating is a bit difficult as it's really up to each individual player, but there are things that could be done to better the player base. For example, add a skill-based matchmaking or create separate casual and ranked queues. While the server isn't quite large enough to consider adding skill-based matchmaking, having a casual battle royale where stats aren't calculated could give players who just want to focus on having fun a break from the constant sweat of those who prioritize their stats. While this isn't a guaranteed fix, in theory anybody wanting to show off their skills would queue ranked lobbies instead. As for toxicity, come on, do you really think that there's ever going to be a solution for that? But, uh, the ability to ignore ad players would be pretty nice. Lastly, let's look at the unbalanced items issue. Just give updates more time to be tested in the testing server. This somewhat contradicts the point made about boring gameplay, but hear me out. While more updates may be more fun in the short term, having less and more thought out updates with more time to test its impact on the game would go a long way. By giving updates more time to be tested, its overall issues can be discovered, studied, and tweaked a bit more. Something that's not currently done but could and should be is sending out player forms regarding updates around a week after they go live on the main server, allowing the community's overall opinion to be heard instead of only the opinion of those who are vocal about it. If you're even slightly active in the Hoplite community, it's clear to see that the current interest in Hoplite videos has taken a nosedive across the board. You would expect the server's play count to go down adjacent with the view count on YouTube, right? Well, in reality, that isn't what happened. Throughout the server's lifespan, there has been an average of over 500 players online even during slow periods of the day, peaking sometimes as high as 1,500 concurrent online players during weekends and holidays. However, as time has gone on, the player count of the server really hasn't been increasing that much. So what does this mean? Well, it could mean one of two things. For one, it could be that viewers have decided that hotplay content just really isn't for them, but it also could be the fact that hotplay content has become quite stale. There really hasn't been many creators to experiment with hotplay content since the launch. Sure, there's a bunch of highly edited and really well produced videos, but it really just feels like everyone is doing the exact same thing trying to one-up each other. There really hasn't been that much originality. I don't think that this is much of the fault of the creator though. Creating content on hotplay is, well, to put it lightly, very difficult. The server doesn't exactly give creators the ability to pursue any original ideas, as well as we still have to follow the rules of the server during public matches. A feature that has been long requested and would help out tremendously is the ability to create private lobby battle royale games, along with custom rule sets. Imagine the potential this could hold. Videos like Hoplite Battle Royale but I have OP, or Hoplite Battle Royale but everyone works together to kill the wither. And that's really just the tip of the iceberg. There isn't much control over the way a game can go, so unless you're a top tier player who grinds out win after win, content is very hard to produce. When only one type of content is created on a server, it really only attracts one audience. Hoplite has already made waves in the PvP community. The best way to cash in on growth is to empower creators to create more types of content. I recently ran a poll with the question, how do you currently feel about Hoplite? Which at the moment of this recording, has about 4,000 votes. Looking at the data, we see that only little over half of the votes exclaim that they are fully on board with the current state of Hoplite, 25% not enjoying Hoplite content, 12% not enjoying the server, and 8% being done with Hoplite entirely. Although it's a sizable vote, we can't be certain that everyone who voted was a certified Hoplite enjoyer, but from the data, we can see a fairly even split of people who are still excited about the server compared to the people who are getting burnt out. If I had to vote, personally, I would cast a vote for the Hoplite videos are becoming stale category.
Now I think is a good time to shift the discussion to the main focus of this video and what sparked my interest in creating the video that you're currently watching in the first place. A comment left by Speedsilver himself on another YouTube video criticizing the current state of Hoplite. Now, while I do agree with a lot of the issues brought up in said video, I don't think that it was worded in such a way that could create a positive discussion around the server. But in terms of Speedsilver's response, I'm a little bit torn. On one hand, he absolutely has the right to defend the server that he's so passionate about running, and his rebuttal makes a lot of sense. However, on the other hand, the comment does feel a bit too defensive at face value, especially in the first half of the post. The comment starts out by addressing criticism in the video, countering Boa's claim that the server has become too stale due to a lack of good updates. But I think I have to agree with Speedsilver on this one. Compared to most servers, Hoplite is constantly updating all aspects of their game, both player side and server side. With the frequency that the server is updated at, there will be some adjustments that are hit or miss. I do however understand what Boa means when he brings up the questionable updates. A recent update and the update that Boa singles out in his video was a change made to the trident item, enchanting all crafted tridents with loyalty 1 and a damage buff upon crafting. I think they just do stupid updates like the Trident update, for example. Like, no one asked for Trident Stamp Loyalty 1. That was just something they thought that would be good, and it was not a good idea. They nerfed it literally the day of making that update, and they had made a craft to give you Loyalty 1 on the Trident when no one even asked for that craft to be made either. Being part of the Hoplite testing team, I did have the opportunity to test this change a day before, and ouch. This change was not balanced. The day after testing on the testing server, the change went live on the main server. And within a day after that, the change had been completely reverted and replaced with a loyalty one book, which you could obtain with a custom craft. I think it's a very questionable series of events. And it's very peculiar that loyalty out of all enchants would get a custom craft book. I feel that the addition could have been handled much better given more time to test. And with the suggestion of player feedback, the way that it was implemented could have been thought out way more. It almost feels like they knew that this change was terrible, but just weren't able to suck it up enough to just remove it entirely. So they met in the middle in the weirdest way possible. This is just one of the examples of questionable updates to the server, but to say that the server lacks constant updates is completely untrue. The next claim that Bowie makes in his video is that Hoplite lacks an anti-cheat. Although I'm sure that he didn't mean it literally, he points out that the anti-cheat doesn't always work immediately when you need it to. They say they have an anti-cheat, but I just don't believe they do. And if they do, it's just not, can't be that good because I just always see hackers and they just never get banned. I don't claim to fully understand how anti-cheat works from the ground up, but I will try to explain from my understanding. I'm sure that we've all had those moments where we wish that the anti-cheat was just a bit quicker to punish cheaters in our game. The unfortunate reality about server-side anti-cheat is that there will always be a back and forward battle between anti-cheat developers and hack client developers, always trying to get one up on each other. When a server updates their anti-cheat, hacked client devs will discover how the anti-cheat works and find ways around it to make their cheats even more undetected. This back and forward has culminated in cheating being very hard to see with a blind eye. The reason that players aren't banned immediately following an unfair advantage being detected is largely in part due to false positives. A false positive could mean that a laggy player hit somebody from further than normal due to their shoddy connection, but instead of banning them immediately for getting a melee hit from six blocks away due to lag, the anti-cheat has to run mass calculations to determine how the player hit them from so far away. This also helps anti-cheat developers gather data to better their program. The Hoplite anti-cheat is slow for sure, but it's always there and it's always watching. This point in specific I'll have to give to Boa over Silver. Silver makes the remark that there is in fact an anti-cheat in place, and and that he probably hasn't seen a B-Hopper. Again, I'm sure that Boa was just exaggerating the no anti-cheat, so this really didn't need to be a point made. Well, sorry Silver, I would love to agree and give this point to you, but cheating is a lot more prevalent than I'm sure that you'd like, and you're more than aware of that. I beg you to not minimalize how much cheating happens on Hoplite. It's a serious issue that, while I'm sure that you're dealing with it, needs to be taken care of before it kills the server. And to anyone watching who might be thinking about cheating, trust me, I've been there. And well, there's no easy way to put this, but if you cheat, you'll die a Turbo Virgin. The last part of Boa's video that I'm going to be going over details how he thinks that Hoplite has become boring and repetitive. There's also a decent amount of people quitting Hoplite. Like, for example, Feinberg used to be one of the main players who played it every day, streamed it every day, grinded it every day, and even he got bored of Hoplite. So it just like, gives you an example of why like, a lot of people are going to quit the server. Like, a lot of people came to me in, in my stream and told me they were going to quit the server because it got boring. I know that we already talked about this earlier in the video, but Silver and I have a point to make. Silver responds with the following. In my opinion, games just get repetitive over time if they're all you play. You probably miss the feeling of Hoplite being brand new and having tons of hype when it first released, but it's been out for a while now and it's inevitable that it'll get repetitive at times. In other words, go touch grass, loser. When we repeatedly experience the same thing over and over, our brains become accustomed to it, and it becomes a lot less stimulating over time. This applies to Hoplite and really any other game that you play in general. If you're feeling bored of Hoplite, then there's nothing wrong with taking a break, or even just playing a little bit less. 
An example given by Boa is that Feinberg, a leaderboard player, recently quit the server due to stagnation. But if you look at things a little bit deeper, this player has played 613 games with a total playtime of 14 days, 3 hours, and 40 minutes. That's a lot of playtime within the span of 3 months. By doing a little bit of math, it's been about 109 days since the release of Hoplite, which is roughly 2,616 hours. If we estimate that Feinberg sleeps an average of 7 hours a night, which is the recommended amount by doctors, that only leaves 1,853 hours of being awake. And with a total playtime of 336 hours, that means that 20% of Feinberg's life was taken over by Hoplite. It just makes sense why he would want to take a break. Living a fifth of your life in a Minecraft server is just not healthy. Nobody should be doing this. The server's always going to be there when you have the time to play. If you're bored of the game and you still find yourself needing to log in and play, that's called addiction, and you should probably get some therapy for that. All jokes aside, it's completely natural to get bored of anything, but you shouldn't be getting bored of Hoplite as long as you play it within moderation. So yeah, based ass silver take, the tiebreaker and final point goes to speed silver. Obviously, we aren't really keeping score here. Both sides provide great insight. One side is just from the server's owner and the other from a content creator. I can understand both sides. It's extremely hard to run such a large Minecraft server, but it's also extremely hard to want to create content or even just play a server that has so many glaring issues. We only bring up these problems because we love the server. So I really hope that this video didn't come across as a blind attack towards Hoplite. By getting this far into the video, you may have thought to yourself, Lackey, why do you care so much about a Minecraft server? Well, honestly, to me, it's a lot more than just that. I found UHC at a time in my life where I really didn't have that many friends, and I felt really alone. Some people get excited over the new sports season, some people look forward to new video games, but for the younger me, it was always exciting to see a new season of Ultra Hardcore Recorded Rounds being uploaded to YouTube. From the Cube UHC, to United UHC, and even the silly ones like Pickle UHC, Seeing Ultra Hardcore in such a pitiful state was hard, because it meant that time was passing and we were all growing up, and there really isn't much that we can do about that. And until Hoplite, UHC was a lost cause for so long. I might not be the best player, but this game means a lot to me, and that's why I care so much. Anyways, as of the recording of this video, Hoplite hasn't even been online for 4 months. To put that into perspective, that's less than a third of the year. By comparison, servers such as Tubnet and MCC Island which have been up for well over a year have a fraction of the current player base, with the former having already shut down due to a lack of interest. So what should you take away from that? Give Hoplite's development time to cook. This is still an extremely developmental stage for the server as a whole, and having known a lot of people on board Hoplite's team, all we need to do is be patient while they put their plans into action. Hoplite isn't going to be for everyone, and no one's saying that has to be. However, if the network wants to succeed long term and grow a larger community, shifting its focus from entirely PvP related game modes to appeal to a more casual audience will yield huge results, and introduce the server to communities that otherwise would have no interest in it. That's what Hypixel did with Skyblock, and as much as it's killed a lot of the server in other aspects, it's kept it alive with tens of thousands of players for years. So the question of the video is, is Hoplite failing? Hoplite set out to revive a cult classic game mode and reintroduce it to a brand new generation of players with a modern twist in the latest version of Minecraft. In that regard, it is absolutely succeeding. But as a server and a network, there is still a lot of growth needed to maintain a player base long term. Will Hoplite turn things around and be the server that we need in 2024? I'll leave that up to you to decide. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and let's have a healthy and respectful conversation.